Hello and uh, welcome to Life and Art uh, with Champagne. Uh, welcome again to our new episode with an amazing, amazing soul, um, a soul sister, very conscious artist, human being, a beautiful person, and an amazing talent, Nare. Welcome. Thank you, Brad. How are you doing? I'm doing really well. Good. How are you? Good. 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 Um, I'm just going to go straight into it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on. Um, what are you working on musically at the moment? Musically, we're working on a second record. I play in a band called Star Captains, and um, we also just started a recording studio that we built. So we've been kind of in between writing and recording and building, um, building on and doing renos to the studio. So it's right, been right. quite a process, but it's been an exciting one. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think I think I've seen uh, pictures of the studio and you guys building it up and working yeah. uh, and with your partner uh, Max. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> cool. So tell us a little bit about your your um, artistic creative journey. I have always, I've always, ever since I was a kid, just been singing, and um, music's been kind of my form of um, expression. And you know, as a kid, it was like I was, a, I was a really happy kid, but it was really hard for me to speak about serious things. And when my parents would sit me down to get a little serious and deeper, I just want to make jokes. And so, music was the first thing that really got me to open up. Um, and to be able to express myself in many ways and I felt so it just felt so natural to um, whether it be dancing from painting to singing to right. anything that could I could express right. um, yes yeah, so. I, 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 I know you to be a, a spiritual very spiritual person too so in hindsight when you look at it from a spiritual perspective right. uh, when you look back how do you think um, your connection to music that the early stage was when you look look back today what what do you think it did um it brought me a sense of connection to spirit mm -hmm. and to my higher self and to god and um it really it really transformed me in many ways and it's always been my therapy it's always what i go to um when i'm going through a hard time um it enables me to kind of be able to express that pain, let it go, and channel that energy into something else, right. into something good, um, or at least something beautiful. Right. Yeah. I like I like the use of uh, the word higher self. Mm. So I'm gonna use that word now. Okay. So higher <laughs> self, um, because I, I I believe that every single one of us, every single one of you guys uh, watching this, every every person has a higher self. Completely. And and I'm just lately. Uh, aspiring and, and discovering my sort of spiritual connection with my higher self mm -hmm. and it took a long time uh, so so your higher self right what's how do you connect with with the worldly self that you are on the outside you know the physical, the physical material realm. world right and then you connecting because the higher self i think in all of us is very pure so it how is. do you connect with the purity and then balance the impurities of your surroundings? You know what? It's I feel like our higher self is always there. It's just a matter if we listen to to that voice and we tune into that higher higher mm. voice that we have. Um, and I feel like because things that have happened through past experiences that we end up kind of putting on these layers that kind of tune out that voice. Right. right. And so for me, it's about really discovering, you know, opening up these layers and digging a bit deeper and. Um, um, unlearning what I've learned right, in right. order to restore and remember who I really am. Right. Yeah. But that must have taken a process. It, it, it I'm, doesn't happen, I'm still going through right? that process exactly. completely. Exactly. It oh, doesn't yeah. happen overnight. No. And, uh, <laughs> so, from from my experience, um, it's it's kind of interesting how realizations happen in people. You know, like the saying, "You don't know what you have till it's gone." Yeah. I think kind of like that in life. You realize a lot of stuff after you've caused the damage, after you've been yes. through stuff, okay. after you've hurt somebody or after you've been hurt. So let's talk about brokenness. brokenness. Have you been broken? Oh, many times. Um, it's been in my darkest times that I've, I've grown the most um, and I've learned the most. And um, yeah, there's been, been many times and I feel like I'm always working on something. Um, right. This is never ending road. and. Um, Right now I'm working on um, compassion, 
understanding and self-love and that's like learning to love the whole me um, the darkness the good the bad the flaws the imperfections the quirks um, the days where I can't fit into my jeans and um, <laughs> I keep telling myself I'm just like it's perfectly normal not to be perfect or normal right. and um, you know I, like I think I dealt with a lot of growth when I was growing up um, acceptance and being able to fit in because I never really felt like I fit in right. anywhere and I was kind of really confused I'm like what am I doing uh, what am I doing here what is my purpose because I know it's something big but I just don't feel like I can help right now right. Um, and so I can specifically remember a time um, when I, I hurt somebody really badly as a, as a child I um, I was with, sitting with a group of girls and they were all gossiping about this one girl and um, they're like, what do you think, Noray? And I kind of chimed in just to fit in. And lo and behold, the girl was actually sitting right in front of us and she turns around. And I, the look in her eye, like the pain that was caused from just us talk, talking badly about her, um, I'll never forget that. And she ran off into the bathroom and I chased after her and I was so sorry. And I was like, I'm never going to do that again. I'm never going to mm -hmm. purposely cause someone's pain. Mm -hmm. We have enough suffering. Right, right. Um, so that was a huge lesson for me. So now we're talking about this, this, this pain that you caused when you were young to right. this girl, and then it made it taught you something valuable. Definitely. Um, and and as you grow, I'm sure, like everyone, you've had other challenges, other obstacles Many. in life, failures, yeah. right? We all go through that. So it creates that brokenness, and that brokenness creates a crack. Right. So how how did you? How did you deal with that crack, those cracks in, in us, in you? Uh, I carried that one on for a long time because um, I think just it's my natural state to really just want to help people and be supportive and be of service and and I just, that just, I just felt like the worst person in the world. Um, and so I've kind of, it's interesting you kind of create these layers as you go along. Mm -hmm. If you don't, if you don't express it or release it, you suppress it right. or you internalize and then we kind of self-sabotage. And so I think for me, I kind of carried it along and um, like I learned so many lessons um, throughout my childhood, but um, yeah, I just think that it's a constant healing process and we, in order for us to heal, we have to first be real with ourselves and recognize mm. um, the good and the bad and accept those things and then let them go. Right. Yeah. So acceptance is very acceptance important. Acceptance is huge. Right. So huge. accepting who you are, but, yes. but in a manner that, you know, who I am is not uh, in recognizing who I am, but who I am needs to evolve. Exactly. Right? Not exactly. like, oh, this is how I am and this is how I'm going to be for the rest of my life. Right. Right? So, <clears throat> um, t tell me, like, if there's, uh, um, I don't know, some some life-changing, like, defining moments of... Like, pivotal like, moments. Pivotal moments where you had this... Yes, epiphany. Yeah. Um, when I really woke up consciously, um, I was just getting out of high school and I started dealing with a lot of health issues and, and um, I was diagnosed with cancer. And so that changed my whole, whole world. That just wow. kind of flipped everything upside down. I was like, there you go. Now you try and sort out the pieces. And um, it really set me on a, a better path um, mm. than I was going down. So I was, I was a very rebellious teenager. I was really confused and just wondering where, where I was in this place, in, in this world. Right. And um, that set me on a really good path and actually made me more conscious about what I was putting in my body, more conscious of my body and um, how I can actually heal myself because I, I wasn't getting the answers that I was wanting from the doctors. Mm -hmm. um, so it really um, made me delve a little bit deeper into other forms and modalities of healing. Mm -hmm. um, and then directly after the year um, after my mom also had cancer so we both were kind of going through it together and yeah. um, that was a huge point of turning for me because it forced me to spend a lot of time on my own mm -hmm. and it I think pushed you it pushed me to do that and it's I'm grateful that that happened because uh, that amazing it is it's really strange yeah because especially in the modern world and in the Western world uh, I don't know if it's if I'm wrong, but I feel like people think they're invincible. I think we have this tendency to think we're always we going to be we cool do. and young and yeah. Right? I had this idea like, okay, we all get old and then we get sick and then we pass on. And I'm young right now. I'm 19 years old. I've my whole life ahead of me. Right, right. So that was a huge slap in the face. That was like no, <laughs> right. you know, right. yeah. Like it just made me appreciate every day, every so, single day. Yeah, I think um, so. Now, 
and I really appreciate, firstly, I appreciate you sharing this, this deep story, personal story about yourself and mom. And I, I, I commend, look, I, I, I salute your courage Thank to you. be able to talk because the whole point is to, to somehow aspire to heal others too because everybody's suffering at some mm -hmm. level, right? Oh so, yeah, we, so, we don't come into this world, uh, we don't go through this life unscathed, that's no, for sure. And, exactly. I mean, we are born into this world as divine, unconditional love. Um, and then somewhere along the line, we experience things that aren't so loving and aren't so yeah. kind and supportive. And um, yeah, it just... And it's a test. It is a test, it is for a sure. Test. It is. Yeah. And there's so much pressure. We're bombarded every day with societal pressures, of peer pressure, of um, there's family issues, there's mental health issues, and mm -hmm. we're already going through enough stuff as it is, and then right. we create extra suffering by not dealing with these things or talking about them. Right. You right. know, we kind of just mask. Right. So, so I, I mean, I'm firstly, I'm very glad and happy that you exist. I am right? so happy you exist. Right. And, and, and I'm happy that you made it through that phase. Uh, just t tell me a little bit about, like, when you found out about your cancer and your mom's cancer, how did you, I, I know you, you were fighting it and you were trying to be positive, but, right. but that process is not as easy as we were talking about. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So how, how did you, I'm sure you've had, you had moments where you were like, you felt hopeless. I, almost, or, yeah, I felt, I went through a lonely period of feeling alone because no matter how many people were saying they're there for me, it's something that you almost have to put on your battle gear and you kind of feel like you have to conquer it on your own because um, no one really understands what it feels like and, and how it can be really shaking. And, um, so a lot of it was me writing, like I just wrote, like I have books and books and books and books of um, just mm -hmm. lyrics and poetry and just music really got me through that time. Music wow. and my family and, and close friends. So um, yeah, it was, it was, um, it's not something I look back on very often, but I am grateful for that experience for sure. Right, right. Yeah. So thank you so much. Thank you. So we're gonna, we're gonna end right here um, uh, conversation about life. We're going to talk a little bit about art now. So, tell tell me about your your song that you're going to perform for us. This song pretty much sums up everything we spoke about today. Um, Wonderful. It's a song called "Good Things Come Around," and it's more of a reminder to ourselves, even to our younger selves, that even when you're going through a time of loneliness or pain, that you're not alone. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much what the song is based around. Yeah. Good things come around, people. <laughs> All right, let's check it out. Because you 